Good morning and welcome to this service. Today being the 24th of May, Sunday after our session, we wish to extend a big welcome to all of us, wherever you are. We are coming to you live from ACK St. Mark's Westland, and we are blessed to have our Archdeacon with us, and he'll be sharing the word of the Lord with all of us. I want to welcome all of us to stand wherever you are, in your house or wherever you are resting, that we may sing to our God, O Lord, my God. Those of us who have hymns to look at, it is ancient and modern, hymn number 546, and we are blessed to have, to have the choir and the praise and worship team as we worship the Lord as they lead us. Mountain wonder and heal the brook and fill the gentle breeze. Then sing my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sing my soul, my Savior God. on the cross my blood and gladly bearing he bled and died to take away my sin then sing my soul my Savior God to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sing my soul
continue to worship the Lord this wonderful morning. As I said, we are from ACK St. Mark's Westland, and we are blessed to be here to worship the Lord together with you. Wherever you are, if you have the prayer book and you can be able to follow with us, we are on page three, being an ordinary surface. The Lord be with you. We have come together, the people of God, drawn by his spirit, longing for his word, to praise the holy name of the Lord, to share his glorious news of grace, to pray for our needs and the pain of the world, to rejoice in his love and be sent in his peace. We are heirs of the Father, renewed in the spirit. I tell you that there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins in repentance and trust, God is faithful and just, and you forgive us our sins. So let us confess them to our Father. As we sit or kneel, wherever we are, together let us pray that prayer of purity. Eternal Father, God of our ancestors, before your power all things tremble, but through your Son we approach your throne. We have done wrong and neglected to do right. We are sincerely sorry and Count them not against us. Grant us the joy of forgiveness. Enlighten our hearts with the glory of Christ who died and rose again for us. Amen. The God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ rejoices at repentance and declares acceptance. The dead are alive, the lost are found. His goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life and you will live in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Blessed are those who live in your house. Praise the Lord. Let us all stand wherever we are and say, Glory to the Father in whom all things began. Glory to the Son. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. We sail in the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his thoughts with praise. I will sail in the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad, he has made me glad, I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad, he has made me glad, I will rejoice for he has made me glad. I will request us to continue standing as we hear the psalm read to us by Reverend Charles. Psalm 104, and we will read from verse 26 all the way to the end. Psalm 104, reading from verse 26. There the sheep go to and fro, and the Leopardine, which you formed to flourish there. These all look to you to give them their food at the proper time. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your heart, they are satisfied with good things. When you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to the dust. When you said your Holy Spirit, 
they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. He who looks at the earth and its tables, who touches the mountain and the smoke, I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to the Lord, my God, as long as I live. May my mediator be pleasing to him as I rejoice in the Lord. But many sinners furnish from the earth, and the wicked be no more. Praise the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord. Glory to the Father, to, to the, the Son, and to, the to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was, was in, in the beginning, beginning, so it's now and forever shall be. Amen. We welcome the praise team to lead us in praise and adoration. Then we hear the Old Testament reading. Praise God. Praise God, church. Amen. Let us uh, join in this hymn that says, Ataka in Jewess. Praise God. Nataka nim juwe yesu nani zidi kumfahamu ni juwe pendo la kena wokovu wake kamili zaidi Shall we have our seats for the Old Testament reading, which is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 65, reading from verse 20, verse 17 
up to verse 25. Isaiah 65, reading from verse 17 up to verse 25. New heavens and new earth. Behold, I will create new heavens and a new earth. The former things will not be remembered, nor will they come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever. In what I will create, for I will create Jerusalem to be a delight and its people a joy. I will rejoice over Jerusalem and take delight in my people. The sound of weeping and of crying will be heard in it no more. Never again will there be in it an infant who lives but a few days, or an old man who does not live out his years. He who dies at a hundred will be thought a mere youth. He who fails to reach a hundred will be considered a caste. They will build houses and dwell in them. They will plant vineyards and eat their fruit. No longer will they build houses and others live in them, or plant and others eat. For as the days of a tree, so will be the days of my people. My chosen ones will long enjoy the works of their hands. They will not dwell in vain or bear children doomed to misfortune, for they will be a people blessed by the Lord they and their descendants with them. Before they call, I will answer. While they are still speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb will feed together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox, but dust will be the serpent's food. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. The New Testament reading can be found in the book of Revelation, chapter 21, reading from verse 1 to 8. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with men, and he will live with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from every eye. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down. For these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To him who is thirsty, I will give to drink without cost from the spring of the water of life. He who overcomes will inherit all this. And I will be his God, and he will be my son. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, and all liars, their place will be in the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. This is the word of the Lord. Buona let us rise up and uh, join in these praise songs as we magnify and talk of the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Jina la Yesu, ningome yangu. Jina la Yesu, ningome yangu, nitamkapu 
jina hilo ngome nyingine sina nitamka kwa jina hilo ngome nyingine sina jina la Yesu Good morning, church. It's another Sunday morning coming from uh, SEK, St. Mark's Church, Westlands. And uh, on behalf of our canon, the vicar of our church at Westlands, Joshua Mungo, I bring the notices. Uh, the corporate physical Sunday services still remain suspended until further notice. The food appeal, we want to appreciate the many people who have gone out of their way to make this possible. Those who have contributed, given us food, helped in restocking the food that was uh, restocking our stocks. Thank you so much. We want to appreciate the groups and the individuals who have made this possible. The house fellowships. We still continue, we still encourage our Christians to continue with their fellowships through Zoom. The tithe and offerings. We know times are difficult, but we are very happy with our Christians for you have continued to go out of your way to give your tithes, to give your offerings to support the work of Christ. Many of you have used M-Pesa to send your money. 
Some are, go are going direct to the bank, and others are walking to the church. We want to thank you, and thank you so much for supporting the work of Christ. We want to thank our youth technical team who are helping us with uh, streaming the services. Thank you so, so much. The praise and worship. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming to support this ministry. The choir. Thank you so much. Thank you for availing yourself. Thank you for coming to sing for our God. And at the back here, we have the clergy who are supporting the ministry and making this possible. We don't want to assume them, and we also want to appreciate them, and thank you so much. May God bless you and go before you. So that we may hear the word of the Lord coming to us through S.E. Case and Max Westlad, our archdeacon, Canon Joshua Mungo, bringing the word of the Lord to us. I request all of us to stand. And if you are tuning in to the service right away now or through YouTube, you're very, very welcome so that we may worship the Lord even as we prepare to hear from the Lord. Our praise and worship team and the choir as they lead us to say, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine, hymn number 601. Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine, oh, what a fortress of glory divine, and of salvation, patches of Thank you that indeed you are God who is in charge of our lives, God who is so loving and caring, God who speaks to your people at all times. And this morning as we gather in our homes and wherever we are, may you indeed speak to us and may the words that we share this morning be of encouragement to each one of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, Christians, and praise God. 
Indeed, we continue on trusting God to do great things in our lives. Many people are struggling with the current corona crisis, but strengthened by God, we continue on, moving on, trusting God to do something new and wonderful in our lives. This morning we'll be reflecting on the readings of the day, but mostly Revelation 21, verse 1 to 8. Revelation 21, verse 1 to 8. And this morning we'll remind ourselves that God is in charge. God is in charge. John, the writer of Revelation, is writing from the island of Patmos. John is a very old man. He has outlived most of the disciples, and that John now is in the island of Patmos. John has seen the church that he has been leading strengthened, but at the same time, John has seen the church scatter. And therefore now he comes to chapter 21, after the other chapters where he has seen Satan being defeated, he has seen those that are evil being judged, and that now he looks and that he receives a vision in chapter 21 of Revelations. The Bible there says that John sees the heavens and the earth passing away, and that it's revealed to him that God is going to do something new. And that John sees and he says, I can see the holy city, a new Jerusalem, coming down from heaven from God. And John therefore continues saying in verse 5, he sees the ones that he sit on the throne saying, I am making everything new. That God has shaken the earth and the heavens, and that God therefore says, I will not destroy them completely because I am redoing them. I am making something new from them. Probably this day as we face the corona crisis, maybe this is our desire, that as God has shaken the world, as God has shaken economies, as God has shaken businesses and everything around us, that God will do something new in the lives of his people. The Bible there says again in verse 6, God says, I am the Alpha and I am the Omega. In other words, God says, I am the beginning and I am the end. Because Alpha was the first alphabet in the Greek and Omega was the last. And therefore God therefore says, I am the beginning and I am the end, that God's word is final. People may say many things in our lives. Others may write us off. Others will conclude about the situation at the moment. But God says, I am the Alpha, I am the Omega. His word matters in our lives. John begins by talking about a new heaven and a new earth. He says that the first heaven and the first earth are passing away and that God is going to do something new because he will create a new heaven and a new earth. This reading or that particular text, the first verses, they remind us of the creation. When you read back in Psalm that we read in Psalm 104, it reminds us also about God's creation. That in Psalm 104, God is seen to be in charge. 
that when he takes away his breath from us, we suffer. When he removes his hand from us, we are not provided for. And therefore God is saying, we are being reminded about the creation. And for this morning, we are reminding ourselves about God, our creator, who is in charge of our lives. When God created the creation, we were reminded of many things. Number one, we were reminded of the power of God. That as we think about the creation of God, we are reminded of God's power. He that created the earth, the one that created the oceans, the one that found us, including the mountains, the valleys, the heavens, and the earth, is God who is powerful. The God of the heavens and the God of the earth. People of God today, we are reminded that our God is powerful, that we can trust in the God of creation, God who is mighty, God who created the heavens and the earth, is God who is powerful, God who can do great things in the lives of his people. We are not only reminded today as we think about creation of God of power, but we are reminded of God's authority, that when God creates us, he comes with authority. He has authority as the final say because the Bible says he is the Alpha and he is the Omega. He is the one with authority over everything. He is the one, the Bible says that he says that the, the, the new, the heavens passed away and the earth. And behold, I create something new because God has authority over everything. This morning I want to remind you that our God is a God who created us, the, the earth and the heavens, and that is God of power. He is God of authority, and that God wants to have authority over our everything, over our lives. God not only is God of power, he is not only God with authority, but also he is a God of love. God who says that I will not destroy these people forever, but I will come and I will dwell in our midst. And he says that, that I will, that look, the holy city, the new Jerusalem, is coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her, for her husband, that God is now coming in our midst to come and dwell with us. God who sent his son Jesus to come into the world is continuing to look for mankind and that he has overcome the enemy and that now he's saying, I am coming to dwell in the midst of mankind, that the relation that he began in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve, the intimacy, the closeness, the fellowship, that God desires that this be continued, and therefore he says, I am coming down to be in the midst of my people. God is not only a God of power, a God of authority, a God of love, but he is a God who has a plan for each one of us. That God therefore decides that his creation, he will come up and he will redo it. And the Bible says that he will, he will make everything new for the people of God. In as much as God is powerful, in as much as he has authority, in as much as he has love and power, what have we done? We have doubted his existence, haven't we? We have doubted that God really exists. We have taken God for granted. We have lived like as if God does not matter. We have, we have lived our own lives. And it is now that God has taken us back to, 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 for us to remember that actually God real, really exists. If God only takes away our breath, if God takes away the things that we enjoy freely, the air, the sun, the rain, and whatever, we will realize that he is God who created the heavens and the earth. We have doubted his existence. We have challenged his authority. We have destroyed even what God has done. We have, we have gone ahead and assumed our relationship with God. And now God comes and says, I will come and dwell in your midst. Verse 3 says, and I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, 
Now the dwelling of God is with men. He will live with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the older order of things has passed away. Our God is saying these words. This morning, I don't know what you're experiencing in your lives, but we are being reminded today that the God of creation is in charge. He has not abandoned us because he has not abandoned his people. He says, I will come to my people. I will come and I will dwell in the midst of, their, in the, of his people. God says he has not abandoned his people. This morning in your situation, you might be feeling that God has abandoned you. You might be feeling that you are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are defeated and that you are uncertain about life. I want to remind you that the people in Revelation felt like God was no longer there. The people in Isaiah felt like God had abandoned them. But God comes and says, I have not abandoned my people. And that God says, I will come and I will make my dwelling in the midst of my people. This morning I want to remind you as we conclude that God does not abandon his people. He does not abandon the earth. The earth that he created for a purpose, God does not abandon it. God will not allow his people to perish through this kind of epidemic that is widespread. He will not allow because God does not abandon his people. God is still in charge. And for people who are asking wherever they are, where is God? Is God still in charge of the, of, of the, of the world? Where is God? Why is all this happening? God says, I am coming. It is not us who are going to him, but the Bible says that I he saw the holy city of Jerusalem coming down from heaven, from God coming to his people, and that God was making our world, our earth, the dwelling for himself, because God does not abandon you. He does not abandon the people that he loves. Your father can abandon you. Your spouse can abandon you. Your children can abandon you. Your friends can abandon you. But God does not abandon you. Turn to him and pray that the Lord will be with you. That he does not abandon his people, but also he brings healing and transformation. I will come to my people. The old order will go away, and I will bring a new order. God will bring healing. He will bring transformation. Even through this corona crisis, may the Lord come in our midst, in our families, in our lives, in our churches, in our nations. May he bring healing and may he bring transformation. He says there that there will be no more crying. There will be no more pain. There will be no more death. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes because God brings healing. God brings transformation. This morning, some of you are in tears in your homes as you think about the loss of your job, as you think about your businesses that have crumbled, as you think about the future that is uncertain, as you think about your dreams that are shattered, you probably are in tears. May the Lord wipe away your tears. May he bring healing. May he bring transformation in your life because he is a God who does not abandon you? He is a God who brings healing and transformation. He is a God who does that. He is a God who overcomes evil. In chapter 20, the Bible says about Satan's doom, that Satan was released from his prison and he was, he was defeated because God had overcome him. And finally now the new Jerusalem is coming because Satan has been defeated. His power is no more. Death has been conquered. And everything that Satan thought he would of, of achieve has been defeated because God has come and that God has overcome. He is God who overcomes any evil amongst his people. 
Indeed, God will overcome for us. He will go before us and lead us. He will cause us to be overcomers in our lives. And therefore, very soon, the corona crisis will come to an end because God will overcome. He will make it new for ourselves. He will make the world new. He will renew us because he says, I am the Alpha, I am the Omega. I am the beginning, I am the end. He says here, the new Jerusalem is coming. Will you be part of the new Jerusalem that the Lord is creating? When this world has been gotten rid of, the earth and the heavens that we see, when they pass away, God will create a new heaven, a new earth for you. But he says in verse 8 of 21, the cowards, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those practicing magical arts, idolaters, and all, and all liars, their place will be in the fairy lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. God has opened for you an opportunity of salvation. And we are told that the new Jerusalem, the doors are open. If you read later in that chapter, that the gates are open, that you and me will enter and be part of the people to enjoy the glory of God. The new Jerusalem manifests the glory of God. The new Jerusalem is safe and secure. It is protected by God because God is in charge of that city. This morning, are you going to enter the new Jerusalem? Are you a coward? Are you the unbelieving? Are you among the vile and the murderers? Are you the sexually immoral? Do you practice magic? Are you an idolater? You will not access the kingdom of God. But Jesus comes and says that, Behold, I stand at the door and knock, that if anyone hears my voice and open, I will get in and dine with him. This morning, Jesus is saying that he came. On Good Friday, we saw him dying on the cross. He resurrected. Today, we, thought, we think about his ascension, and we see God coming in power on Pentecost Sunday that you and me will live a victorious life. May we be strengthened by God. May we know that God does not abandon you. He has not abandoned you. He will bring you healing and transformation and that God will help you to overcome because God is a God who is in charge. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we bless your holy name this morning. We thank you because you are God who is in charge. You created the creation for a purpose that we will enjoy intimacy, we will enjoy a permanent relationship with you. And yet because of sin, Lord, we have gone astray, we have denied your existence, we have challenged your authority, we have even destroyed ourselves. But Lord, we ask for your mercy and your forgiveness. May you not abandon us. May you, O oh God, uh, bring us healing and, and transformation even through this time of difficulty. May we overcome because, God, you are an overcomer. And as we commit ourselves into your hands, we pray that you take charge, charge of our, our fears, take charge of our future, take charge of our, our problems, take charge of our nation, Kenya, take charge over the world, and demonstrate your power because God, your God, who is in charge. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, our vicar. Let us appreciate what the Lord has spoken to us. And I pray that we are encouraged and that we put those words into practice to trust the Lord because he is doing something wonderful. If you are in that last category, he mentioned Jesus is calling you to welcome him into your life so that the Lord will bless you and your life will be changed and become better. I request all of us to stand wherever we are so that we can affirm the faith that we believe in. 
usually on page 12, the Apostles' Creed. We start together with the Christians throughout the centuries and throughout the world today to affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered at a point as Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. As we sing, ask and shall be given to you as the choir leaders. So brothers and sisters, as our Savior taught us, may we boldly pray together, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Page 14, item 21. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. O Lord, God, our president. And give you the of May your ministers serve you faithfully, O God. In the valley of the shadow of death, like trees planted by the waterside, Send us out as the salt of the earth. May the earth be filled with your glory, O God. Today is the Sunday after a session. We'll join the collect for today. Lord Jesus, you bid your disciples to go into the world and preach the good news to all creation. Grant that we too shall be committed to his commission. Send us, Lord, wherever you choose, wherever you will, and we shall gladly go your name and by the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Shall we continue in prayer? The prayer for grace, the first alternative, item 24, page 15. Together, Almighty God, you have been our God through the night. Keep us in your care through the day walking in the light, bearing witness to your way, seeking first your kingdom, and seeing you in everyone. Guide us in the footsteps of your Son, and lead us to the path of your everlasting day, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our loving Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, this morning we come before you, our hearts full of gratitude and love to you, but our hearts also full of pain, even for the pains of the world. And Lord, we want to thank you for who you are, that when you created 
the foundations, lay the foundations of the world, there is nothing that past you notice. And Lord, you have power. And Lord, you are in control. Even though we may feel defeated, even though our hearts may be full of anxiety and uncertainty, Lord, you know all things. And Father, we choose to be on your side. We choose to trust in you. And so this morning as we come before you, Father, we want to present every need, every pain, and every desire before you, O oh God. For you have promised us in your word this morning, Isaiah 65, verse 24, that when we call, you will hear. And we are still speaking, Father, you hear, and you'll answer. And so we want to present before you, King of glory, all those who are paining, all those who are sick, all those who are going through diverse suffering at a time like this, those who have been affected by the floods, those who have been affected by the loss of their livelihoods, those who have been affected by bad health and sickness of various categories. The Lord, in your mercy, may you come through for them. In your mercy, may you intervene in every situation, O oh God, and in through your power, may you relieve them of every pain and every suffering in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray this morning, visit those who are admitted in hospitals, those who are suffering from cancer, from hypertension, from diabetics, from accidents, those who are suffering from COVID-related uh, sicknesses, Lord, would you touch their lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, those who have lost their lives, those who have lost their homes because of demolitions, because of floods, would you grant them comfort and safety in the name of Jesus Christ. As your son, Jesus Christ, did not have a shelter or a roof over his head, may you identify with these people their hour of need and give them hope, O oh God. Lord, we want to present all them, those who are working to help the sick, the nurses, the doctors, the researchers. The Lord, you grant them wisdom, that you protect them from every harm, even as they put their lives in danger. Would you fight for them? Will you cover them with the precious blood of Jesus Christ? Lord, we know that this pandemic has also brought a lot of tension, not only in the families, but also among countries and nations. We want to pray for every nation of the world that they struggle with this pandemic. Dear Lord, may your peace that surpasses understanding be upon our leaders. Grant them confidence. Grant them spirit of leadership to show leadership at a time like this. That Heavenly Father, whatever they do, every decision they make will be for the benefit of your people, O oh God. Will be for a solution, not to aggravate the situation. We want to pray for our neighbors, the nation of Tanzania, Uganda, South Sudan, Somali, and all those that we are connected in one way or another, that peace shall prevail among us we shall be united as a people under one God because you are our Father. So Lord, we bless and we worship you. We pray for the economy of our nation. We pray for revival that comes from you for you promised us a new heaven and a new earth. May we be reborn again. May we be revived again. And may we rise up in your new Jerusalem again. Because you are God who visits your people in a special way. As we pray, your kingdom come. May your kingdom come not only to lift us spiritually, but to lift us in every situation. That in all this we shall know you. Remember your church at a time like this. That we shall be agents of hope. Agents of peace. Agents of revival that salvation shall be 
our language. Salvation shall reach people wherever they are, whether they come to church or not. Lord, your hand is not too short to save. Reach out and save. Reach out and deliver. And reach up and draw people back to yourself. For we ask all this, Father, trusting and believing in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Together, page 17, item 29, we join together the prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, by your grace we have come together this time to bring our united prayers to you. And you have promised by your Son, Jesus Christ, that where truth we are gathered in his name, he will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions, as may be best for us, granting us this all knowledge of your truth, and in the world to come life everlasting, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We now come to a time of giving. It's a time when we pray for you who has been giving, that the Lord will continue blessing you. And this is a time when we think about supporting God's work. And again, we want to thank you for continuing to support God's work through your giving, your tithes, and your offerings. May the Lord indeed richly, richly bless you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for people scattered in their homes. We thank you that as families they can sit down and even think through together about how they can support your work. And we thank you that indeed most of them have given faithfully that they have supported your work even during these very, very difficult times. Therefore, Lord, we commit your people into your hands that God will not abandon them, that God will manifest your presence in their lives, blessing them and prospering them in what they do, blessing the works of their hands that they will succeed in their lives. Pray for those in their difficult situations that God will cause them to arise and that will bless and prosper them. Those who are in need that God will provide for them. And for Lord, as a church, as we continue rising up and standing, may you make us strong. May you watch over our lives and protect us in all ways. May you bless your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And now, I commit you into the hands of God, that may God and God with our Father and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, may he fill you with all joy and peace, that in believing that you may have the power of the Holy Spirit in your life, you may abound in all hope, that you will look into the future with confidence, knowing that the Lord is with you, and the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. 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 We shall now recess, and as we do so, we shall join together in singing the hymn, My Hope is Built in Nothing Less. <laughs>